Hello, I am a national pilot. Today, we revisit the world of bug snacks as we investigate the secrets that were left behind by the DLC, The Isle of Big Snacks. I hope that the clues that we find today will help us predict the story for a possible sequel if such a game is created. For context, two videos ago, I had made a video revolving around the gameplay that could change for a possible sequel of Bug Snacks. This was made before the DLC had came out and had been released the day after. Since that release date, the DLC had revealed tons of lore for us to snack on. I may have had a little too much. Again, this video is delving into spoilers for the game and specifically the DLC. So be aware that if you choose to continue, I would recommend watching my previous video where I go over the basics of the main game's story. If you ignored my spoiler warning, I will give a brief summary about what the DLC added to the story. Spoiler, it's a lot. So we start with Snorpy summoning us to the beach, and suddenly a large island arises from the sea, named Broken Tooth. You then create an expedition team of Shelda, Lufty, Chanlo, and Triffany. You then spend most of the time learning about the backstories of these characters, and learn some interesting facts, such as the reason that Snorpy is a conspiracy theorist is because he worked for the government, but he had also almost been tricked into creating cybernetically enhanced super soldiers. We were working together on a government-funded research project, advanced prosthetics that are ten times stronger than an ordinary grumpus. But our dear Snorpington discovered that the government had less than savory plans for that technology, and despite my protestations, he tried to make those plans public knowledge. Now, we don't have time to unpack all that. After going through the missions and the wacky hijinks... Floofty, did you tell the journalist to throw acid at you? You destroy a wall that leads to a chamber that depicts... That depicts... Oh god. But the group questions what could have ended the civilization that once stood there. And those murals... They depict human... Um... Grumpus sacrifices to bug snacks. In fact, it's something that Triffany points out, and she uses it to rationalize why the snacks in this area are so large, calling it unique fertilization. But there's even more. In this area, there's a chamber that has many torches, and a door. Light all the torches, and the door opens, and in this door, you find a triangle key. After you get this key, you get a letter to a mailbox that shows this message. To quid idas, omni vivum ex bug snacks. You have what you need to enter a very special place. If you do not know the way, Grump Beard will show you. Signed, B. Sure enough, if you go to the boat of Grump Beard, you find a giant triangular door. Going through it, you find a strange area known as the triplicate space. Well, aren't you an intrepid little journalist? Coming into this secret hideaway just to ask questions of the first stranger you see? I do respect the pursuit of knowledge, and I have been down here for way too long. Go ahead, question me if you dare. In this space, you find these recordings that have information about any question posed by the main game. Like, what are the Gumpinati's goals? Who was the mysterious voice at the original ending? What happened to Veronica Lauterbach? All of them will get answered in this video. Though, I think we should start with... In this area, you find multiple recordings from a grumpus named Alec Gander Jamfoot. Alright, who's naming these characters? Anyway, you find these recordings and they seem to be an interview. In this interview, he goes about his experiences he's had since his exile to this temple. The reason for this exile is not known, but if I were to hazard a guess, it was because he kept asking for stuff. Yes. I will be well rewarded, ideally with a weekly stipend, or maybe even um, health care. Even not having to pay membership dues would be, you know, pretty good. 
First thing to clarify is that this isn't the Grumpinati, and they are instead called the Snackalites, but they can't exactly correct anyone. We also know that they wish to keep the truth of the snacks a secret until they can be controlled, which honestly might be a bit fair in context. While down there, he uncovers a prophecy about three beings known as queens, two of which have already been created, and the third of which they wish to be a person of their own ranks. The third queen will be one of ours, hopefully. With her power, we will usher in an age of peace and prosperity, ideally before my student loans are due. When you complete both the puzzles in each room, you find a final recording about how these recordings were confiscated. Well, wasn't that fun? <laughs> I will be taking your recordings now. Oh, don't look so shocked. Surely you understand I can't let any of this become public knowledge. And how whoever recorded them was recruited into the ranks of the Snackalites. This has already raised the question of who actually recorded these? The answer has to be Clumby, your boss, who is shown to be a part of the same group as Jamford in the ending of the original game. No, no, I sent them away. It would be hard to make them disappear at this point. Do they suspect anything? It almost seems like Jamford has risen in the ranks of the Snackalites since these recordings. We know this based on two facts. One being that Clumby seems to be reporting to Jamfoot, almost as if he was her superior. And two being that you get a letter from Clumby telling you to not let Jamfoot push you around like her. Which makes sense. These discoveries had gotten him unexiled from the triplicate space, leaving only the remains of his research. But what exactly were the three queens? And why were they so important that they got him a promotion? Which leads us to the two queens, two individuals who are described as being part of a prophecy discovered by Jamfoot. In fact, this is probably supposed to give us the reason on why Lisbeth gets stuck in the Undersnacks to begin with, and what exactly happened to her. For those of you who don't know, at the end of this game it's revealed that Lisbeth somehow controls the bug snacks. furthermore, the island itself, because that's what it's comprised of. This is because she has a strong enough will to resist their control, at least for a little bit. I almost lost myself, but somehow I pushed back. I made them into me. But with the triplicate space, we become aware of not only how this happened, but of two new individuals who had this power and who had went under the same experience. A ritual sacrifice that turned them into queens. Furthermore, we see a mural of these two and we can notice a pattern. The first queen is comprised of snacks from Broken Tooth and the second was comprised of Snack Tooth snacks. This implies that each island had a connection to the queen that kept them afloat. Which does make sense. After all, Broken Tooth sounds like what the name of a kingdom whose ruler is described as wrathful. I imagine their stories went like this. In order to create a queen, you would need to sacrifice one of your own to the bugs. Though I would guess that when they originally did this, it was not to create a queen, but instead to appease and feed the snacks, so that they would be calm and docile. I think this is the case because although we only get two queens, we get multiple representations of leaders of the Gumpuses. I believe that they were the ones that came up with the idea to sacrifice their own to make the snacks docile. And it worked, until one day they sacrificed the Grumpus of Strong Wills, who became enraged at her sacrifice. The Grumpuses who survived her rage sought to make another one, another queen, which led to a ritual where they sought out the strongest amongst them as described by Trifony. Every year, the ladies would go hunting and the one to bring home the biggest bug snack was the new head honcho. Eventually, they created the second queen, who was able to defeat the first, causing Broken Tooth to sink back into the ocean. However, the victory was short-lived, as the enlarged kingdom grew too large to manage, causing her to fall as well. 
They're so ravenous that they're shaking the ground apart. I'm the only thing keeping this island together right now. Well, she must have still clung on to life for a while, at least until Lisbeth's expedition arrived, where she promptly died, causing the island to fall apart, which led to the earthquake that caused Lisbeth to become lost. After I saved Degabel, I fell into this place. Before I knew what was happening, I was swarmed. Bug snakes were crawling down my throat. They tried to erase me, to make me into them. But somehow I pushed back. I made them into me. This series of events meant that Lisbeth was there to take the place of the recently deceased queen, which is why she has the ability to control the snacks for a little bit. But since their will wasn't as strong as the original two queens, it was only temporary. Considering that the main objective of the snack lights is to control the bug snacks, it makes sense why the creation of a queen, which has the ability to control them, would be of importance. This discovery would allow the group to control the snacks, and allow them to complete their goal. Though because Broken Tooth eventually resurfaced, that might mean that the first queen was either revived, or replaced, allowing the island to unsink after so long. Perhaps this could serve as a possible plot point for a sequel. There is something that I have a problem with though. That's who wanted us to find these recordings. It probably wasn't Jamfoot because there's an alternate ending that seems to suggest that they were stolen from him. Plumbie is also off the table as after you find the space, he sends you a letter where she signs off as C and not B like this letter does. In fact, it might be possible that this letter was sent right after the phone call in the alternate ending, which is why she knows you were there and sends you a letter. Otherwise, she would just be sitting on this information that could destroy the whole operation until Jamfoot finds out, which doesn't make that much sense. But who would be interested in sharing everyone's secrets besides... Besides... Oh f no. I'm Bethica Winklesnoot, and I know everything about everybody. I'm just kidding, of course. But who else do we know of who has an initial that starts with B? I guess if you squint then maybe the player character, since they're referred to as Buddy in multiple parts of the game. And even the certificate of completion uses Buddy as your name, but then why would you hide this key for you to find? No, the only other character who has a B as their initial is Barna Collada Block, the grandmother of Triffany. For those who don't know, one of the side quests is where you follow Triffany to different parts of the island as she tries to find clues of her grandmother, who also came to this island. Though we find nothing, not even a body. But with what we know now, it's clear that the Snackalite silenced her when she got too close. I'm afraid that Brana Kalata Blog has gone somewhere that you should not follow. However, she escaped, got the recordings back, and sent clues once the time was right. It would also justify Triffany being in the DLC, because she really doesn't do anything. It's even in an area where one of her side quests take place. The only other explanation I could think of is that this is from a character we have not heard of yet, and this is foreshadowing for some sort of puppet master-like character who is pulling the strings unbeknownst to his subordinates. Thank you for watching this video. I have much more that I would want to talk about, but I think this video has gone a little too long already. So I might make a third video on Bug Snacks, talking about what the actual story for a sequel would be. If you would like this, then please like and comment down below. Also, please subscribe so you don't miss it. As always, have a nice day.